Welcome back to the watch list. It's time to look at cryptocurrency space all across the board. We've had a wild market. We've had recession fears. You've had currency markets that have been fluctuating with the yen carry trade. Andy Bear is with us, head of product Coindesk Indices, and Samir Kravaj, chief investment officer at Hashdesk. Thank you, Dex. Thank you both for being here. Samir, I'll start with you. Um, the pullback that we had seen in the markets, how did that affect or not affect cryptocurrency in your mind? Hi, Nicole. So um, we saw a big pullback during the weekend that was mostly uh, impacted by uh, basically a flight to quality or flight to liquidity uh, from traders uh, being impacted by the unwind of the, the yen carry trade, as as like we, we were talking about in the last uh, segment. And um, what we believe, this is a very short-term shock. And you can see that prices are already recovering for crypto specifically and on Bitcoin specifically. So we don't think it changes much on the long-term outlook we have for this asset class. Nothing changes on the investment thesis we have. Uh, for crypto is still very optimistic. But of course, there's a lot of things going on in the macro, right? So just like you said, we have elections, we have interest rates. So in September, we're going to have the next um, interest rate decision from the Fed. We get tensions on the Middle East. All those things, they add up and they create volatility in the market. But nothing changes the, the investment thesis we have for crypto. On the long run, uh, we're still very optimistic. Yeah. Andy, some of your thoughts here, because we did have the market. I mean, Monday was the biggest sell off we've seen in two years. Right. Bitcoin sitting at around 60,000. It, it held its own, didn't it? Um, some of your thoughts on, on crypto and where it fits into this market volatility. It was it was great watching crypto over the weekend as a harbinger of what was yes. going to happen. Right. Yeah. And so you could watch on Sunday and, and get a sense of where the risk sentiment was. We're definitely in a new volatility regime. We just walked out of one into another. The VIX is down uh, in today's strong equity market three points today, but it's still at 25, whereas the VIX would have been in the low teens coming into this. So volatility melts up and drifts down slowly. We're going to be here for a while. Uh, Bitcoin uh, came off and was at the lowest point. It's down a third from its all-time uh, all time high. So it's a serious drawdown. It's recovering nicely, but it's going to be a slower ride up than it was uh, on the way down. When we think about what's going on with the dollar and yen carry trade, and that was sort of the fear because we saw the yen carry trade, and that's what really spooked the markets over the weekend, and that's why you saw the action. Um, do you say, you know, sometimes you see a flight to quality, people going to other assets. Can Bitcoin, Ethereum, can those be, in some people's mind, the quality. I, it's, a, it's a great question. And actually, Coindesk wrote a great article about this where we, we, we shared th some thoughts about it earlier on. Um, you know, Bitcoin has a lot of great properties as a store of value, right? It's constrained supply, easy to, uh, to port around the world, and it's not doesn't have any sovereign connections, right? So it's a long term store of value that has some fantastic properties. Flight to quality assets are about flows in turbulent times. Bitcoin is a young and volatile asset. It has some great store of quality, a store of value properties. It's not quite what we would call a flight to quality unless you're talking about a crypto specific. So I think most market participants are still going to pile into U.S. Treasuries. Yeah. Let's wait a few years and see how things change. Right. Um, Samir, you know, I still have guests who come on. They're still very skeptical. You said um, you're still optimistic about the entire trading community for crypto. Uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, what goes into that optimism? I mean, are you talking about Bitcoin and Ethereum and what else? Yeah, so, uh, I mean, first of all, Bitcoin is very different from other crypto assets when we analyze. So I pretty much agree uh, with Andy. Uh, the thesis we have for Bitcoin is that it's an emerging digital store of wealth. So it's still not quite there. Uh, we can't say right now that Bitcoin is a good store of wealth. It will be a fly to quality asset. But there is a transformation in our society, a generational shift happening in our society. So uh, we believe that in five or 10 years from now, Bitcoin might be a good store of value for our society. And that's the big investment opportunity we see for Bitcoin. On the other crypto asset, the most important thesis is smart contract platforms. Uh, Ethereum is the largest of all. Um, and on this thesis, what we see now is a, a broadband phase uh, when we compare it to the internet, we're seeing scalability solutions coming into the market that would allow this technology to scale. And this combined 
with a, a lower interest rate environment, which is what we're expecting to see uh, in the coming months, is going to be very beneficial for crypto assets overall. Yeah. And look, now we're hearing correction is possible in the market. Recession is 20 or 30 percent likely, depending on which bank you ask. Um, does Bitcoin become a place to at least have some part of a portfolio? Is, is it somewhat recession proof, do you think? Oh, for sure. And I, I think its macroeconomic qualities are really going to uh, what what will stand out over time. Let's remember over the weekend, we had a real sudden sharp regime shift. We had evacuation from any risky assets. Bitcoin's market structure worked really well. Our parent company, Bullish Exchange, traded over $10 billion in the 24 hours right. going into Monday, which is multiples of its normal volume. Um, compared to 2022, we trust the venues, we trusted the outcomes, we trust the volume. That reliability, dependability, the ETFs, uh, make it much more of a macro asset that can be thought of as being uh, useful in a, con in a recessionary context. So I think all of the hard work and some of the skinned knees along the way have helped us get here. And now I think we're in really solid shape. Yeah. And look, it's been a lot. It's been less volatile. I mean, even during um, the, the regional banks, when those were coming under pressure and there was a time the Nasdaq was going down, but Bitcoin sort of held its own. Right. It's great to see you both. Andy Baer of Coindesk and Samir Kurbaj of Hashdesk Dex. Thank you so much. Great to see you both. Thank you.